Hey guys, Will Mahan here with Saberoon Design Tutorial Blog, and we make game back with another Photoshop CS5 Extended Tutorial. Now in the last tutorial, we discussed using the Extension Manager to install the 3D Material Preset Extension so that we would have a greater variety of materials available for us to use while working in Photoshop 3D. If you don't have the Material Extension installed, go ahead and take a couple of minutes to watch that video now because we will be using some of those new materials in today's tutorial and in today's tutorial we are going to be making a 3D typewriter key logo using the 3D tools in Photoshop CS5 extended so let's go ahead and get started go to file and new and set your size at 1024 by 1024 and click OK now let's start first by setting things up. Go to Edit, Preferences, Guides, Grid, and Slices. Now set your grid to every 256 pixels and set your subdivisions to 1 and click OK. Now click this icon right here to show the grid. Now go to your rounded rectangle tool and starting at this intersection right here, drag out a square down to this intersection and the line should snap to that grid okay we're done with the grid now so go ahead and turn it off click this icon and click the show grids option again to make that go away now go to the 3d menu and choose repose and select selected path now in the repose panel first let's set our depth to 0.4 now set the scale to 1.45 click the shear bullet set your X angle at 13 and set your Y angle at minus 16 and that gives us a nice little offset now the reason we did that is because if you look at the keys on your keyboard they are usually tilted towards the center and towards the top now let's go down here to the inflate pane and set the angle at minus 6 now go to the bevel pane and set your height to 1, set your width to 5, and in the contour choose half round. Now go up to the materials pane and choose all. Click this button to bring up the materials menu and choose plastic and hit OK. Now you want to select plastic textured black and that is now applied to all surfaces of the mesh. Now go down to the scene settings and change your mesh quality to best. And that's going to have our 3D set up. Now one last thing before we close the Repuse panel. Always remember to reset the mesh's position by clicking this button right here to align the axes to world space. And go ahead and click OK. Alright, now go up to window and choose 3D to open up the 3D panel. And first click the 3D object rotation tool and then the orientation fields set that to 90 degrees. Now pick up the 3D camera rotate tool and in the view field choose top. Now click this button to bring up the 3D menu and choose snap object to ground plane. Now go to the filter by lights tab and change the preset to hard lights. Now go to the Filter by Materials tab and choose the Shape 1 Front Inflation Material Layer. Now go down and click the Edit the Diffuse Texture button and select New Texture. Your size should already be 1024 by 1024. If it's not, set that now and click OK. Now click the icon again and choose Open Texture. Now in the new sub document, go up to 3D and select create UV overlays and select wireframe. Now if you've worked with any 3D applications before then you already know what this is. If you haven't this is called a UV map and basically that's exactly what it is. It's a map of all the polygons on that particular section of our object. Now if we were doing a high detailed texture every single one of these lines would matter but we're not. All we're doing today is using it as a guide to let us know where the edges of our mesh are. So go ahead and pick up your text tool, set your type to Arial and your size to 500 point, 
set your color to white and click OK. I'll go ahead and click on the canvas and type in the letter P while holding down the shift key because if you look at your keyboard you'll notice all the letters are capital. Go ahead and click the check to commit the changes. Now grab your move tool and reposition the letter to about eh, right there looks good. Go ahead and turn off the visibility of that UV layer because we no longer need it. Double click the text layer to bring up the layer styles panel. Select drop shadow. Set your opacity to 100%. Set your distance to 1. Set your size to 0. And click OK. Now go ahead and close that sub document. When prompted to save, choose yes. And let's go ahead and go to the filter by whole scene button. And in the render settings in the quality panel, go ahead and give that a quick render to smooth out the edges. And there you have it folks, a quick and easy 3D keyboard key icon using Photoshop CS5 Extended. I hope you enjoyed the video, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.